Global Banking and Finance Review is a leading brand name in the world of finance and banking. Their awards were created to recognize companies of all sizes that are prominent in particular areas of expertise and excellence within the global financial community. This time we're proud to offer Echo Bank of Nigeria an award for Best Corporate Bank Nigeria 2015. Ecobank is Pan-African and is based in 36 African countries. It's the leading independent regional banking group in West and Central Africa and has a network of international offices in Paris, Beijing, Dubai and London. Ecobank aims to contribute to the economic and financial integration of Africa and the sustainable development of the continent through the provision of innovative financial products and modern initiatives. Ecobank believes it has a responsibility to be socially relevant to the communities it serves. Africa is a changing and challenging continent, especially in Ecobank's base, Nigeria, where the recent national election could bring about changes to the financial lifestyle of many. Ms. Faluke Abuderin, Executive Director, came to London to receive the award from Global Banking and Finance Review's Noel O'Leary and Jessica McManigan. Later, she spoke to me about the future of banking in Africa. Well. Welcome, Ms. Aberdaren, to uh, our, our interview today. It's uh, really lovely to have you here in London, and congratulations on winning the award as well. Thank you very much, Phil. Thank you. It's nice to be here, and it's nice to have won the award. Lovely. Well, let's, let's perhaps find out a little bit more about Ecobank, if we may now. And uh, obviously, let's be topical. Uh, at the time of recording, we've just had a very important election in Nigeria. Uh, how do you see that affecting uh, the, the banking sector going forward? Um, before the election, and also because there was some delay, the election was supposed to take place on the 14th of February, but it was delayed till March 28th. I believe a lot of investors were worried that the election would have a problem and would not go on very well, as a result of which Nigeria was downgraded by the uh, major rating agencies. And a lot of the um, investors that would have invested in Nigeria more or less suspended the investment till the outcome of the election. Uh, I understand about $8 billion worth of portfolio investments actually left Nigeria on account of the elections and also on account of the falling price of oil. So now that the elections are over, successful, I believe um, a lot of the foreign direct investments would come back to Nigeria and um, business will go on as usual. So are you optimistic that the, the stability that hopefully the new government will bring could actually uh, improve the situation for you going forward? Oh, certainly because this is the first time in the history of Nigeria that we would have um, such a successful transition uh, from one party to another and also the fact that Nigerians now know that their votes count. Mm -hmm. uh, before now there used to be a lot of um, election irregularities so it's a, it was a very very powerful message that was sent and it just showed that democracy is at work in Nigeria uh, would hopefully have political stability. I think um, one of the first things the new government is going to focus on is security, especially in the northern part of Nigeria, the northeastern part of Nigeria. I believe three states out of the 36 states in Nigeria have been affected by Boko Haram. Um, this new government would have to spend a lot of um, time and also resources to ensure that security returns to, to that part of the uh, uh, country and as such continue to attract um, investments into the country. The other area which I believe this government, the new government, is going to focus on is also corruption. And these are things that I believe Nigerians wanted a change and which is why they voted for a change. And they would also have to look at the economy in view of the fact that um, oil which is the uh, largest revenue earner for the country is, you know, had some issues. The price of oil has fallen. And so um, a lot of um, economic reforms have to take place so that the um, Nigerians would realize that indeed, you know, change has come to the country. It's obvious, wasn't it, that politics affect the financial sector a great deal. What, what would you see would be the opportunities and challenges now uh, facing Ecobank and indeed the, the corporate banking sector in Nigeria? For some time now, infrastructure has been a challenge for us in Nigeria. 
uh, power is a major problem. Um, roads, bridges, major problem. Ports as well. Um, it's estimated that Nigeria needs about $10 billion every year uh, for the next 10 years to catch up in terms of its infrastructural deficit. Now, uh, that in itself, which is a challenge, poses opportunities, of course. Opportunities for us to finance some of these projects uh, um, for the country. Now, in doing that, we need long-term funding, especially in foreign currency, because a lot of these transactions would require uh, foreign currency, uh, typically. So the challenges op represent uh, opportunities for us as, as a bank and it, the entire banking industry, but we have to be able to source long-term dollar funding for, f to finance these transactions. And, and of course, as a bank, you are a pan-African, you're not purely based in, in Nigeria. What would you see are the main drivers for, for African trade and African growth? Okay. Um, Ecobank indeed is a pan-African bank. It's the, the bank with the largest footprints in Africa in the world. Uh, we're in 36 countries in Africa, and we also have a branch in, Eco, in, in Paris, uh, France which is good because it allows us to leverage on that network to provide um, banking services and development in, 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 in the rest of Africa. Um, Ecobank has been able to come out with a lot of uh, products, um, regional products to facilitate trade and services within Africa. I think uh, I can, if you allow me, I can um, actually uh, divide the type of trade that you have into, in Africa into two. First of all, you have the informal market or the informal trade, which is quite large. Uh, the informal trade, I believe, accounts for about 40% of the trade. So you've, you find a lot of uh, people, uh, goods, traveling across the various borders. And um, these things are done informally. And then you have the formal trade, where um, it tends to be documentary either LCs are opened or bills avalized. And um, that again, also you have the oil and the non-oil. So a country like Nigeria, that is the largest producer of oil in Africa, exports oil to a number of African countries. Ecobank Nigeria is one of the banks that um, does a lot of the documentary trade financing for the export of oil across um, Africa. You also have a lot of goods, you know, non-oil goods like, you know, detergents. Unilever, for example, exports from Nigeria uh, into um, Ecowas countries uh, and, and vice versa. So you see a lot of uh, that um, going on in, within Africa. And of course, Ecobank is best um, suited to ensure that the, the trade is facilitated across Africa. What you have, uh, um, you have various economic and regional blocks in Africa. You have what you call you, the Yumwa, you have um, WAMS, you have EAC in East Africa, you have um, uh, SADC in Southern Africa. What essentially should happen is that all those trading blocks should actually integrate as one country because you see the East African block kind of like trading with each other, South um, African area, Southern African area trading amongst themselves. But what Ecobank is doing in, in, in having um, affiliates in 36 countries is to ensure that, you know, we integrate the, uh, the trade, formal trade, and also bring the informal into the formal sector all across Africa. I see what you mean. So you're, you're trying to bring together the, the various diverse groups in, into a cohesive operation, really. Is that correct. the best way of summing it up? Correct, yes. yeah. correct, correct. You see a lot of, um, you also see a lot of, say, Nigerian corporates like uh, Dangote going outside Nigeria and, um, you know, they're knighting countries, setting up uh, cement factories and grinding plants and, 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 and the like. And what Ecobank does is to ensure that we finance them everywhere in Africa that they're in, so that, you know, in that way it helps uh, develop uh, the whole of Africa. 
Let's look at the, the requirements of your actual customers in the, in the corporate sector. Uh, presumably they have requirements. What kind of in innovative products have you been able to introduce to, to actually give them uh, the sort of services they're looking for? Okay, we've been able to provide regional trade financing. Uh, we avalize the bills. Uh, we are able to uh, link the, cost the importer and the exporter because the exporter would be a customer of Ecobank in one um, uh, geography and the importer would be that of um, Ecobank in another geography. So we've been able to provide them regional trade finance products such that, and because we know them, you know, in, in those two geographies, we've been able to um, facilitate uh, trade there. Uh, we've also been able to um, provide uh, what we call the regional card, which means that any um, customer of the bank that is traveling within Africa can um, just, you know, slot in the card into an ATM and, pro and, and uh, obtain local currency. In, 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 in this country as, as a means of um, facilitating small payments uh, within those countries. Also, we have what we call the rapid transfer, which enables you, you, you have a local currency and you receive for, uh, the local currency in the other country. So again, subject to a maximum of $10,000. $10, this again also facilitates um, uh, uh, payments, you know, small time payments within Africa. Plus for the corporate customers, we also have what we are electronic banking um, product, which is called Omni. And with that, it enables you, um, the treasurer of a lot of the corporate customers, have an oversight on their accounts all over Africa. So for example, if you're CFAO or you're Unilever, and there's a regional treasurer in say Cote d'Ivoire, you can see all your account balances uh, of in the various Ecobank affiliates just uh, by using the system. It also enables the transfer of funds um, subject to um, uh, regulatory li limits mm -hmm. um, from one country to the other. So, so a lot of clever technology being used there. Uh, I would like to perhaps ask you more now also about the financing solutions for your clients, the sort of uh, services you provide for clients uh, to help them with, it, with their financial challenges. Okay, um, Ecobank uh, Nigeria has done very well in terms of providing long-term um, uh, funding for a lot of our customers in the telecommunications, in the power, in the oil and gas sectors, an agricultural sector of Nigeria. So what we do, we provide both local currency and uh, foreign currency facilities to these customers, which can be in the form of project finance, it can be in the form of syndicated facilities, it can be in the form of um, working capital. And um, we have also been able to tap into certain um, funds which the Central Bank of Nigeria has in terms of concession concessionary um, funding for um, a lot of the manufacturers and also the power sector and airline um, sector of Nigeria. So we've done, we've, we've, uh, our balance sheet is quite robust in mm -hmm. Nigeria. Uh, out of the 24 banks in Nigeria, Ecobank is number six. And uh, this is largely because um, we have been able to provide financing to a, a lot of the corporate and retail customers of the bank. Quite a competitive situation there. You mentioned 24 banks in, in Nigeria. And, and like everywhere, telecommunications, which you mentioned a moment ago, uh, and indeed the development of IT has become very significant. What kind of technical innovations have you been able to introduce uh, to make your services more streamlined? Telecommunications in Nigeria uh, came in over 10 years ago uh, through the licensing of uh, GSM companies. And it has taken off such that I believe the teledensity in Nigeria is now about uh, 90, well over 90 percent. Um, there are more Nigerians with telephones. I believe there are over 130 million subscribers in Nigeria, and uh, we have fewer banks, uh, sorry, bank accounts. So what the Central Bank of Nigeria has done is that it has actually encouraged um, a lot of the Nigerian banks, including Ecobank Nigeria, to, to actually start mobile banking services such that you can bring in the unbanked into the banking uh, of the financial sector. 
So um, that's one of the things we're very, very active in terms of mobile banking in Nigeria. And um, we have a very robust um, uh, IT platform, which is shared by the entire group through Equibank Group. We use Flexcube uh, version 7, and this has been upgraded very soon to Flexcube number, um, version 12. We realize that um, telecommunications is going to be the area of play, uh, you know, going forward. Uh, we see that a lot of the younger generation actually use telephones uh, to make payments and to make um, a lot of uh, their transactions. So we are in the for forefront of ensuring that we have products and services that actually um, play to to you know the younger generation either using the Facebook mm -hmm. using Twitter to ensure that you know we're able to catch the younger generation who would be the future generation of the country that wonderful world of social networking of course and how that can be integrated within the banking operation yes. and indeed talking about the social situation the social economic development what does Ecobank do to actually help that that development within Nigeria um, Ecobank Group has uh, Ecobank Foundation 1% of the profits of Ecobank Foundation, of Ecobank Group, the banks, also go into the Ecobank Foundation to support uh, CSR activities within Africa, not just Nigeria. As it is, we've actually um, financed over 28 projects all over Africa in terms of education, in terms of health, in terms of uh, capacity building, literacy, HIV, those sort of things. Uh, very recently, Ecobank Nigeria actually partnered with the Global Fund to support the um, principal recipients of the fund in terms of capacity building so that they know how to um, uh, prepare the books and as such, you know, it helps in terms of uh, the rollback malaria project which um, uh, the Global Fund has instituted into Nigeria. Well. Obviously exciting times ahead. Thank you so much indeed uh, for coming to London and congratulations on the award. Thank you very much, Philip. Thank you. We appreciate the award. Thank you very much.